Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Mark Fixes Stuff. In this episode we're going to be reviewing the handheld Spectrum Portable, the Vega Plus from Retro Computers Limited and I'm very very excited to do so. Um, this is the box it comes in, um, a little tear strip and I have been inside this and I've had it for about a week. Now I'll be honest, I've sat on this for about a week not quite knowing what to do because loads of other people have reviewed it and the reactions have been... Well, I don't think mixed is the right word. However, um, I have been asked for my take on it. So, although I might not have anything new to add, this is my take on it. Okay, so um, just to open it up. Now, when it arrived, it was stuck down by this... What I can only describe as weird wax paper. Do you remember when you were a kid and you used to get those things where you scratched with a stylus and there was foil underneath? Well, it's a bit like that. However, this is what you get underneath a Vega Plus. Um, now this was sticking together like this. You tear it open. And this is the Eco packaging, apparently. It, I'm not sure about Eco because it's very large. Now, look, if I turn it sideways, you can see just how much space there is in there. It's, um, let me just get a ruler so you can see. So side to side, you are looking at 22 centimeters internal, top to bottom, 13 centimeters internal. And this is a shocker here, look. So you're here and you've got like nine centimeters. Um, and the, the Vega Plus is nothing like that. So the paper, I don't know. Um, it's strange, it's strange packaging, but I don't know a lot about packaging. So if this is eco packaging, then I will bow to superior knowledge. So opening it up, apologies for this, my cat got in the box. Isn't it strange that you put a cat in a box? Or, well, you don't put a cat in a box. You get a box and the cat puts itself in it. Now, here's one of the things which I'm absolutely gutted about. And one of the reasons that I didn't review this earlier is, and there are a few marks on the screen, so I got myself my trusty lint-free cloth, which I have used on things like my PSP, uh, several of my Game Boys, and all that, and I gave it a bit of a wipe. But if you look here, can you see what's happened? The actual screen is really, really got loads of fine micro scratches. Now it looks a lot worse under the camera than it is. Um, so anyway, this material here really reminds me so much of the same material that you have on a cassette case. I'm not sure what that is, that cassette case material, but um, yeah. So the overall impressions of the unit um, to begin with, I'm not quite sure what this is here going on here. Um, these things, it looks like a hinge to lift up, but you can't lift it up and I have tried and if you get up close if you can see there there's like some kind of paper fillet all the way around the screen you see that oops sorry I might go a bit out of focus here so yeah paper fillet all the way around the screen and this um it's sort of um well I won't say shot blasted but it's uh, like textured plastic on the reverse side of this. Um, and it does look for all the world like there's a catch, like it should flip up or something, but it doesn't. This is how it's meant to look, which is a bit of a strange design choice, I thought. Um, now, looking at the buttons, I've got children, as many of you know. And um, sometimes we go to buy toys. Now, I've not got a huge amount of money. Um, but sometimes we go to Smith's and we buy like officially branded toys and stuff. But sometimes we go to cheaper shops and we buy maybe off-brand stuff. You know, you've got Barbie, maybe you've got Brabby, or you've got Cindy, and maybe you've got Cinity or, or something. Well, the difference between the plastics I found was that the branded stuff had a sort of a really solid feel to the plastic. And it, it looked really, really like, it's hard to explain. It looked looked colourful. And the cheaper stuff had this kind of translucent effect going on. And I do have to say that these buttons have a kind of a sort of a translucent 
cheapy plastic effect going on. So, um, for me, they don't look great. I'm not sure if these buttons are hand painted as well, maybe stenciled or, but it does look. Yeah. So first impressions of the buttons, not great. Um, these buttons over here, well, these are quite well molded. This one here, it's flush the unit, Vega Plus, uh, textured, that's okay. Um, having a look around the rest of the unit, we've got the um, RST button, which is reset, it turns out. Micro SD, which has this sort of beveled thing for your finger. Now, I'll, I'll come back to that. You've got a little charge port. Now, you don't get a charger with this. So um, if you're thinking of buying one in the future, you will have to provide your own charger. You've also got a headphone and a, a video socket. Um, I had to look online about this and it takes a TRRS jack and you can connect it to SCART and get video out on your TV. However, it turns out that there's a bug in it so you don't actually get full screen. What you get is two images side by side in the top two quarters of the image. You've got volume minus and volume plus, and the volume minus will actually become really important later. Okay, so um, that's that bit there. Um, just moving on to the back panel, and I have to explain quickly that I've been asked to obscure this for legal reasons, and I have no idea why. Um, but I do speak to my legal guys before I release some videos like this, where there may be a bone of contention. And they said, you know what, Mark, it's best just to obscure the uh, the serial on the back because you don't want to reveal who you are or your address because there are some crazy people out there. And I don't really understand that either, to be honest. However, uh, speaker aperture, label, screws, one, two, three, four. And um, moving on to the sides of the unit now. The sides of the unit are actually very interesting because... You see here this gully, it's very sharp. Uh, I mean, really, really quite sharp. It's quite hard to point out here, so I'll use my overgrown thumbnail. But this bit here protrudes out beyond the edge of the unit. You can see it there, look, just there. And it's really quite quite abrasive. And it's the, the same. This could have been cured with a, a, a dust channel. So you know, that's kind of design 101 there. Um, along the bottom as well, it's not so rough along the bottom. Um, I wouldn't wow, I wouldn't want to run my um, thumbs or fingers along it. Um, I've heard some people saying that the back edge was really sharp and you cut paper on it, but it'd have to be very thin paper. But it is very, very, very angular, as you can see there. So how does it feel in the hand? Well, slightly less comfortable than a PSP, I'd say. Um, but not terrible, you, you'd be able to play it. So should we power this on? Let's power it on, okay. So this is the power button. There's no instructions with this, so I sort of had to wing it. Went for my manual, RCL. I'm sure you'll come through. So I've pressed the power in. Um, the light comes on at the back, which is the only indication you get that something's happening. And then you get the Retro Computers logo, and then you get the manual. So start up time isn't unreasonable. Then from the top you've got favorite game list, game list, game info, virtual keyboard, access SD card games, back to that in a bit, save game state, low game state, blah, 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 hall of fame, I'm in there under a pseudonym, under a pseudonym, sir. I'm not going to reveal that at the moment though because it would actually reveal quite a lot about me and my browsing habits. Um, so what we're going to do just to keep this short and interesting is we are going to move down to game list. Now, one thing I'm going to have to say is the D-pad feels like it's sunk a bit. And anyone who's used, um, for example, a PS4 controller, if you look at the side of the PS4 controller, you can see that there is a lot sticking out. If you look at the side of this controller, there's not a lot sticking out. So it feels like it's too low. And what that means is you don't get enough action to move your thumb gently and push down. You don't have enough wedge to push down. So I'm pushing down like now, and I can do it, but it has to be very deliberate. It's not a sort of like a second, like I'm pushing down now, it's not moving. Pushing down harder. 
I find that the flash of my thumb has to go down beyond the aperture of the pad for it to register. So look, I'm pushing down flush now. Now I push down one more, a little bit further, and it goes. But then it might go two. So this this is a problem which comes up again and again. Uh, these buttons are not so bad. They're a little bit more raised, but they still feel like they could be higher. They could have taken a lesson out of the, the sort of the Game Boys uh, book. Um, these ones down the bottom, I'm not entirely sure what they do, if I'm honest. So we'll go back up to game list. And we'll press, is it F? I can't remember. Yes. So that takes you into, um, I think maybe F means file. I think maybe F, S means select. So let's go down to Egghead. And then we'll press F. Please wait. We're so excited. Okay, so Egghead by Jonathan Caldwell. Okay, uh, lots of people know this game. So we will turn the volume up. No bones, is there no music on this bit? Okay. Um, so we've got K for keyboard, J for joystick. I'm not sure what to select here because I've got F and S, one and two. Let's try F. Nothing. Um, S. One. Oh, yay. And I can move, look at that. I can jump. Hey, it's not bad. Although the, the controls are very, very difficult to use. It feels a bit laggy, if I'm honest. Um, I have used other handhelds in the past, and I'm one of the proponents of using um, a DS or a PSP for emulation. So, so if I can get that key. Yeah, I've got the key. Um, so, yeah, I've... I don't know if I've been spoiled or not, but but I'm really having to push very, very hard. I can't get that up there. And, okay, there's some kind of flickering going on with the sprite there. Am I dead? Yeah, I'm dead. Okay. Uh, I've not played this for a long time. Don't much like dizzy games, to be honest. That was a joke, by the way. I love dizzy games. Um, yeah, I just can't look. Here's the problem. I'm having to push the flesh of my thumb into this hole to make it move. And look what's happening to my thumb. That's the problem for me right now. Ow. Ow. Um, these buttons are stiff. They don't register so much, but you know, nowhere near as bad as the d-pad the tip i just wish it was higher i wish the d-pad was higher then it could have been a bit more you know decent um also the material underneath it doesn't give it doesn't have that um you know on nintendo when you push it left and right it kind of you push it and then it sort of pops through it's kind of got a little give you like push it and then there's a threshold and then it it goes down this is i don't know i'll be honest i've had cheap handhelds from china uh famiclone handhelds and they've got a much better joypad than this so I'm not quite sure what's happened it's like someone's first attempt at a joypad that they've seen okay so uh anyway enough of egghead that's the screen's brilliant by the way the screen is really really good it's just everything on the screen and trying to control it is the issue right so let's uh press uh where's reset now this will reset it all the way back. I think, I hope. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, eventually. Quite a bit of strobing there. And let's go down to favorite game list. We'll try something else so we know it's not just Egghead that's causing us grief. Oh, game list, sorry, it went past it. The pain. And F, I think, is it? Yep. Yeah. Let's try, I think these games are all by Jonathan Coldwell. Let's try Nifty Lifty. Is that by Jonathan Coldwell? I can't remember. 
Hey, music! No, it's not. It's by Janko. Right. Oh, yeah, that music. It's not quite right. I don't think the channels are all there. Okay, so um, select speed 0 to 9 to start. Help. Let's try this one. It's like mapped to the. And herein lies the problem. Oh, something's happened. Oh, I can move. I mean, oh, hard to. to move. Ow. Oh, yeah. Nearly swore then. Nearly swore. There's the time to go. Luckily in this game you only have to push left or right once. So as long as you push hard enough. To right. uh, I pushed it then but nothing happened. Get Oh you Game over. Anyway, yeah, enough of my indulgence um of yeah, I'm not gonna do that. Enough of my self indulgence um trying to play games on this. It, do you know, the thing that strikes me is if I could plug an external controller in, this would be all right-ish to play games on. But it's a bloody handheld. What's the point of that? Anywho, let's um, see what we can do. Now, let's go back. I think if we press this... Now, although I'm not always successful with this, if we press this one in, and it is, by the way, completely flush to the unit, so you have to really push at it, and then go down to access SD card games. Okay, it's going to tell me there's no card in it because there isn't. Now, this is where I am absolutely bloody stumped. Because I have been trying my damnedest to get games onto this. Um, I've tried this card. I've tried this card. I've tried this card. I've tried a 256 megabyte card. I've tried all sorts of cards. And I have got a lot of cards. I've got a pot full of the bloody things. Um, I've formatted in FAT. FAT32. FAT16. XFAT. Nothing works. I've tried TAP. I've tried Z80, I've tried Snap, I've tried TZX, which I didn't expect to work anyway. Nothing works. So um, I think since I gave up, some people have had some kind of success by sort of hacking things into it. But I shouldn't have to do that, should I? Should I have to do that? No, I shouldn't. Man, that is so inchip printed. So, um, I'm going to be honest, I've got some awesome stuff through the post that I would much rather play with than this. So, I'm going to put this back in the box and forget that I ever had it. My review of this unit is unfortunately, out of 10, I'd have to give it a 2. And I'm only giving it 2 because many people thought it'd never happen. So, this is one in the eye for them. But also... It did happen, and it's so bad that I absolutely wish that it hadn't. I wish it had never existed. It's so bloody useless. It's like you can't use it. You absolutely can't use it. The pad, no good. The buttons, no good. The moulding is sharp. Listen, that's my thumb going over the edge. Find me a piece of consumer electronics that does that. You won't. No charger. Can't get the card slot to work. You need some sort of black magic. Um The sound is blinking awful on the games that have it. And some of the games in that list, by the way, I can't get to work by pressing any of the buttons. So it feels kind of like it was rushed out to satisfy some kind of obligation. Don't like it. Not very happy. I've seen that loads of them are going for much more money on eBay. This might be where this one ends up. So anyway, sorry to end on a negative note, but yeah, there you go. What can you do?
nothing. Subscribe to get your fix. If you like what I do, tell others. If you don't like what I do, don't tell anybody. I don't want to get sued.